Okay, next speaker is Helen Albert. Orbit. <laughs> I'm sorry. So she, she's going to talk about the, snare, the function of snare one in the uh, stem cell maintenance. So we've just heard a really beautiful description of early gut development and I'm going to move on to talk about that endoderm layer um, in, in its mature form in the um, lining the intestine. And I'm going to tell you a story about a molecule that's been traditionally associated with a mesenchymal fate that actually has a key role in um, epithelial stem cells. So this is a diagrammatic representation of the intestinal epithelium um, where we have, uh, which is really an amazing um, selectable permeable layer um, which is responsible for absorption of nutrients but also acts as a barrier against toxins and pathogens. And one of the ways um, that this layer exists is, it, is because it's so dynamic, so it constantly renews. So in the base of um, Crips, we have a stem cell population that produces a, a proliferating transit amplifying cell population that differentiates into both secretory cells, the goblet, enteroendocrine, and the panna cells right at the bottom here, as well as the absorptive enterocytes. Uh, the stem cells reside at the base of Crips and there is a population of stem cells known as the Crip base columnar stem cells that sit between the panna cells which supply key niche signals and is marked by markers such as LGR5 and OLFM4. There's another cell population that sits at the top of the um, panna cell layers that is labelled by these other markers um, known as the plus four um, population. So the intestine really um, has an amazing capacity to regenerate after damage. So for example, if you um, use a radiation or a chemical um, way of damaging or even infection, you can rapidly lose all the proliferating, or most of the proliferating stem cells and the transit amplifying cells actually within two days. But over the next couple of days, um, due to plasticity, where other cell types can slip back down into the niche here, um, we can uh, regenerate this whole crypt. Um, the other key point I wanted to make is that stem cells are also very important in a range of pathologies, and one of them is formation of tumours. Um, intestinal stem cells have... Um, there's a lot of evidence they can act as a cell of origin for colorectal tumours. Um, but within the actual tumour, and this is a human uh, colonic epithelium here, we can see the stem cell uh, population labelled at the bottom, the differentiated cells labelled at the top. If you actually look at in um, colorectal tumours, you can see um, stem cell regions as well as differentiated regions. So um, we are interested in molecules that regulate the stem cell population and I don't have time to go into it today but this work was really inspired by some work that was done in Drosophila um, looking at molecules that regulate um, stem cell populations in the Drosophila uh, testis and gut. Um, and we started looking at the snail family of genes. And snail family genes have mostly been known for their role in mediating epithelial to mesenchymal transition um, and in mouse and human, there are three genes, SNE1, SNE2, SNE3. So the majority of my talk is going to concentrate on SNE1 um, because this is the only member of the snail family that we found is actually expressed in the epithelial cell layer in normal um, intestinal epithelium. So snail proteins have been implicated in regulating stem cell populations in both mammary stem cells, this is work from Bob Weinberg's lab, and also epidermal stem cells. So we've taken a number of experimental approaches and in the talk today I'm going to talk about our um, work on the knockout of SNE1, um, ectopic expression of SNE1 and some of our work in organoid cultures. So this is just showing the expression of SNE1 in our intestinal crypt. Um, so you can see these narrow cells here, these cells with the dots in them are um, the secretory granules in panna cells. So SNE1 is localised in the um, stem cells at the base of the crypt. 
This is co-staining with LGR5, um, so you can see that they're co-localised, although snail is actually expressed um, more widely than LGR5 also in the transit amplifying cells. So we did a knockout study um, using two CRE, inducible CRE drivers, the AH CRE and the villain CRE. We got s s similar results with both. We first looked at the differentiation um, lineages and what we found when we looked at the uh, secretory cells, there was no difference in goblet cell numbers, but we saw an increase in both secretory enteroendocrine and panis cells in the knockout animals. When we looked at cell proliferation, um, we s f could see if we looked right at the base of the crypts in the knockout that uh, there appeared to be some proliferating cells that were missing. And this is, of course, where the proliferating crypt-based columnar um, intestinal stem cells reside. And when we looked specifically with some markers, um, LGR5 and olefin 4 this is our control animal here. This is a panis cell marker. These are two different um, CBC stem cell markers. We found in our knockout that actually most of these cells had um, disappeared. And we also crossed our mice to the LGR5 GFP model, and by facts analysis, we could see that um, around 90-95% uh, of the cells had disappeared. So the question was, what has happened to these cells? And we thought uh, one possibility is that they had actually, what was somehow not surviving, or they had perhaps transdifferentiated. So we used a lineage tracing um, approach. Um, the uh, Soriana. Uh, Rose 26 reporter has been um, introduced very nicely in the previous talk. Um, and the way that you can uh, lineage trace is if you um, inject the animals with tamoxifen on day one, you label the stem cells themselves and you can slowly follow what those cells turn into by these ribbons of um, blue cells. So we did this in the context of the snail one knockout. This is just a whole mount of our control gut versus our snail knockout gut. So all these little blue dots represent individual crypts. And as you can see, we barely produced a lineage trace in the snail knockouts. Um, this is our quantification here. So the, these cells are lost very early. So we looked at um, caspase 3 staining, um, and there is an increase in apoptosis. So we think the most probable mechanism um, is that these cells are being lost by apoptosis. But we investigated this further using intestinal organoids. So intestinal organoids, for those um, of you that may not have heard of them, are a way of growing um, intestinal uh, tissue um, in matrigel, where these little buds are like the crypts where you have the stem cells at the end. So uh, when we, so we established organoid cultures and then added the tamoxifen to the medium. So what we found is, um, so on day zero, um, the cells are a, a similar um, amount, but really the SNA1 knockout cells failed to grow, and you can see that they had uh, they have less buds than the um, wild types. And we did an apoptosis assay. Um, this is just a, a DAPI PI assay, and uh, in the normal organoids you can see some apoptosis in the center, but in our SNA1 knockout organoids we could see um, apoptosis in the buds. So again, this confirmed the idea that the um, cells are probably being lost by apoptosis. Now, a lot of people say, well, what actually happens to the mice? And this is a very interesting phenomenon which has been described for a number of essential genes that regulate intestinal stem cells. Um, because the Cree models are never 100% um, efficient, um, so if we look at five days after snail one knockout, this is just looking at snail expression, uh, we really can't see much there, so we've knocked out our gene as expected. But um, quite rapidly, the cells start coming back, and this is due to um, the epithelium actually regenerating from the unrecombined cells. So if we just leave the mice sitting there, this, they're perfectly okay, um, and they actually bring back their snail-positive cells. But if we give them a zap of um, radiation or 5-FU challenge, um, this really dramatically um, affects their ability to regenerate following damage. So we also wanted to do the reverse experiment, and that's um, see what happens if we actually ectopically express snail. So if you look at the levels of expression of snail in the intestinal stem cells, 
Um, it is there, but it's not at a really high level. It's not at a high level that, we, that you would see um, to promote a real um, EMT. So we thought, what would happen if we actually raise that level a bit? Um, could we actually influence uh, the number of stem cells that um, are present in the epithelium? So this is our strategy here, again, using the two different Cree drivers. We actually found the opposite lineage switch to knocking out SNAIL. We actually saw less secretory um, panathen enteroendocrine cells. And when we looked at the stem cell population, we actually saw an increase in the CBC stem cell markers, um, but not the plus four markers. And this is just our control um, ICAD here and here, which is a known um, target of SNAIL. So in summary, um, what we found when we knock out SNAIL is that we lose our CBC stem cell population and we get a skew um, towards uh, secretory panath and enteroendocrine cells, but interestingly not goblet. Um, and when we um, increase SNAIL levels, we actually increase the stem cell pool and we um, have less of our secretory panath and um, enteroendocrine cells. And I just wanted to point out that this is really quite um, an evolutionary conserved phenotype. Um, so um, in fly gut, uh, escargo marks um, the intestinal stem cells. And if you knock out escargo, you see a similar loss of intestinal stem cells and the same um, lineage skew. And in this case, um, this has been known to um, work through, through notch signaling. So I'd like to finish here with some acknowledgements. Um, so this work was um, primarily done by my postdoc, Katja Hove, in the lab. Um, uh, Thierry Jardet has uh, done a lot of the organoid work. And Rayanne Acta, this is her here, has been doing the colorectal cancer work, which is a work in progress. This project has been done in collaboration with Gary Heim, and it was actually his work in uh, Drosophila that inspired this study. We've been working together on this study, um, and this is his research assistant, Franca Casagranda. And here are some of my other collaborators that have donated um, mouse strains and um, other expertise. Thank you. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you that after Rosa Beddington lecture, so there is stem cell section. So we have three talk of the stem cell. So we don't have so much time. So if you have any question, one question or something? No? Okay, thank you very much. Okay.